Hey folks, Tim here from Amplify Trading. We're going to have our second installment on trading psychology. So we've had a fantastic week with the US presidential elections all the way from Tuesday evening right the way into the end of the week. Lots of volatility. And so what better time to be able to reframe our job as a trader and how we think about our job and what we could be doing better. So I'd like to take this video opportunity to go through one key way of how we can frame our thought process. And then we're going to go through four different, very practical things that we can do uh, with, our, with our trading, with our charts and so on, um, that can really help us get positioned uh, to be able to think clearly and to get into a position where we can just in a very fluid manner do what we know we should be doing as traders. So to kick this off, we are going to have a look at uh, the whiteboard. So, you know, this is something that I've uh, used with quite a number of traders and it's called OODA loop thinking, O-O-D-A. OODA loop thinking. This was a thought process, a sort of a thought decision matrix process developed by John, John Boyd. He was a, a trainer at the Top Gun Flight School uh, for the uh, US Air Force. And this was a sort of a method that he developed in order to help pilots to frame their thoughts and base it in facts and then feed in information and then come to decisions and take actions in very rapid succession and creating new thought uh, loops, new uh, decision trees in rapid, rapid time. And this would enable the pilots to essentially not get anchored down by old information when they're making a decision on the now. And so, Let's get into this. Essentially, what we're looking at here is, oh, let me just get this pen going. OODA loop, O, O, D, A. So we're gonna go through this. The first stage is observe. We observe uh, a situation. The second stage is orientation orientation. The third stage is decision. And the fourth stage is action. So when it comes to trading, this is something that's really helpful. We can come in in the morning and we open our charts and we, we can clearly observe, uh, you know, okay, Friday morning, oil is down. Okay, well, we can see oil is down, uh, dollar is down, euro is up, um, equities are kind of ranging at the moment. And so you're just really making observation. You're not taxing yourself with having to do anything at this time. You're just soaking it in. And then you're free to kind of move forward from there, right? Under this sort of loop. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna get this here. And it's all about feeding forward, essentially. Feeding forward. So we're in observation stage in stage one. We're in orientation stage in stage two. Decision in stage three, action in stage four. So as I said, when we come in in the morning, we just observe the markets, look at the charts, see what's happening. Okay, fine, we've observed, oil's down, all right. So then we feel comfortable to transition. You know, I'll just put in here, just look. And then, you know, we feel comfortable in transitioning to the next phase, which is orientation. So when we're orientating ourselves, you know, like a soldier dropped into, a, a, you know, a war zone, a battlefield, or, um, you know, someone put into a, 
any situation really you have your your clear observations and then you have to orientate yourself to the details okay so we can come in look at oil we start you know at the daily bar chart we can see this trending for the past couple of weeks on the upside then that could come into play today and so you're starting to map out the market right you're starting to map here so this is mapping right you're mapping out you know finding levels find levels um you're finding support resistance uh, you're observing where there might have been excess, excess on the highs or excess on the lows. You know, what time did the volume come in overnight and drive down? Were, were, was there some data overnight? Um, I was certainly looking for any overnight data that would have been uh, talking down a while. Um, when I first came into my charts at about like half seven in the morning, I couldn't actually find anything. So, but in phase two, we're orientation stage we're mapping out things we're finding the levels okay so once we've done that we're free then to feed forward again we're moving forward now don't be sitting there thinking well tim i'm not going to be i'm not going to be writing down okay i am now moving from the you know observe stage to orientation stage to decision stage that's not really what i'm asking you to do this is really something that happens quite naturally for most people but we're going to get into this and we're going to see how we we have the very root of some of the worst things that um, pitfalls that traders can can get sucked into okay so in stage two We've come from just looking to the mapping out, finding the levels, drawing support, drawing trends, drawing resistance, um, maybe looking at delta or volume or something, whatever you'd like to do. And then we can kind of come to a decision. Okay, this for me, this uptrend um, from, I think, uh, I can't remember the exact dates back, but it was intersecting on the lows of uh, Friday, it, it was well below market uh, when I'd first come in, and it was coming in at around 37, spot 38 on oil, okay? So then, for me, I was just, and I've been tracking that level for days, we've been tracking it in the room, I'm happy to say a lot of people got on this trade, and I simply wrote down, okay, decision, 37, hold on, where are we here? Let's get a different pen for this. You can write down 37 spot, say 40. All right, let's say 40. I want to be long there in WTI, okay? You can set up an alert or whatever you need to do. But the important thing is, is that we've come from stage one to stage two, and now we're ready to make that decision to make a trade, right? We're not taking action. We're just making a decision from our calculations and from our smart work to take a trade long at 37.40, okay? So what happens is the market, market came down, actually the market came down to that. A few of us were looking at this and studying these levels in the room that morning. And lo and behold, once we've done the decision work, we're ready to feed forward. So what does it, what does that entail? Well, of course, that entails in you know taking the trade. You know, so the action is when we come down to thirty seven forty. If you haven't got a limit or order there, um, you're hitting in at market, or you might just place a, a limit order at the last minute, or maybe you want to shake out a bit. But then you take the action. Okay, you take the action. You take action, you click the button, or you know, you click, you click, you enter the trade, right? You're in, okay? So you've essentially, the most important thing is here, you do your job as a trader, okay? Now this might all seem really simple, but this is, it's, it's so simple that people, deviate from this thinking that this is just a natural human response to sitting down, taking trades, being a legend, 
making loads of money, easy peasy. All right, well, it ain't that easy, okay? Trading psychology with junior traders all the way through to people who I've coached who have been trading for 10, 15 years, it comes down to psychology. It's always psychology. So, you know, the technical stuff, you can learn that, like you can learn all the technical stuff you need to within a six month period. You know, but when it comes down to putting on risk, um, our minds just, just play such evil tricks on us that we have to bring it back to basics. We have to re-engage with a calmer mindset. So where the problems come in here, right? And this is, this is the more interesting part of this, okay? The problems come in is when we are, the problems come in when we skip uh, a beat on this steps one two three four right so let me let me just bring this over here a little bit right I'm just gonna bring this over to a little bit of area here I think we should where is it going Got some text yeah okay here we go. So let's look at like easy peasy loop, right? And this is going to be kind of frustrating because you're going to think, oh, Tim, what are you talking about? This is like it's simple stuff. But an example of a healthy loop is, right? You wake up in the morning and you think, right, I'm about to leave the house. You look at the window and think, oh, it's sunny, it's dry. Uh, let me check the weather app. I wonder how long it's going to be sunny and dry for. So it says 21 degrees, brilliant. It's going to be a dry day. No jacket, no jumper, just t-shirt. So you grab your keys, you walk outside, you get in the bus. And the outcome is it's freezing cold. The app said 21 degrees, 21 is warm, like t-shirt weather, right? For, some, for someone in Ireland or the UK anyway. And you think, okay, let's do this again. You know, you take in the information again, you start another OODA loop, right? Okay, you go, oh, the wind factor is making it like cold. I need a jumper, but like, you know, take this out. You're still on the bus now, right? Or you might be just walking down the road. And so you're th starting that new loop and you're going, right, it, it's cold because of the wind. I need a jumper, but I don't need a jacket. Okay, I decide I'm only going to wear a jumper. Okay, so O O D A, one, two, three, four, right? Observe. The wind factor is what make it's what making it's what's making this twenty one degree day cold to you. Number two, you orientate yourself as to I need a jumper but not a jacket. Okay, and then number three, I'm deciding. Yeah, okay, I'm only going to wear a jumper. Number four, you leave the you, you've gone back to the house, get your jumper, you leave the house again, and you forget about it for the rest of the day. Right, that's a normal, healthy OODA loop that we, we would all do um, easily. An unhealthy loop is this, you know, an unhealthy loop is you're about to leave the house, you don't check if it's warm or cold, uh, you don't check your app or look out the window or anything, you just put on like a t-shirt, jeans, out you go, you're walking down the road for five minutes and then you go, it's cold, but I don't really care. And then you spend two weeks being sick. Okay, so number one, you're about to leave the house. You're observing. Well, you're not really observing anything here in phase one. Is it warm? Is it cold? You're not really even thinking about it. Then number two, you don't orientate yourself with information. You're not taking anything in to give you a guide or a barometer at all of what to expect when you walk outside. So then decision, all right? You decide to go outside and then you're starting get, getting new information that is freezing cold. And action, you don't take an action and you get sick. You know, it's all, it's all so simple, right? But, oh, it's all so simple, but you know, this is, this is where we start to get into what causes traders serious drawdowns and really big emotional uh, reactions to their trades, okay? Just let me try and get this camera to focus again here. 
what happens to traders is that you know we have things like fear of missing out revenge trading chasing a market averaging into losers you know these are all the real you know the real nasty ones right and, and it gets absolutely everybody so in in a healthy state we observe we go to two orientation mapping out finding levels uh reading some news looking at what data is coming up then we go to making a decision you know like i'm looking at oil on a on a Wednesday, um, it's half 11 in the morning. Um, I map out some areas, support resistance trends, uh, look at value, and then I decide, okay, I'm only gonna trade when we get our DOE data at 3.30 GMT in, in the UK and Ireland. Okay, and then when it comes into the, into the data, uh, we get a volatility spike down into my level. I decide to take the trade and I've taken my action. Okay, and it's as simple as that. Healthy loop, right, done. Okay, cool, brilliant. Well, in an unhealthy loop, right, here's what happens. Oh, sorry about that. Here's what happens, right. We go from perhaps one or stage one fine uh you know stage one fine stage two we find our levels fine great brilliant we've got some good levels right and then we just go oh you know what actually oil is is or my market has actually spiked into that level and now it's like 20 ticks up I actually liked the longs from around there, so you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna jump out there and, and get into this market without paying any observation maybe to um you know what might have happened at the level, for example. People skip having a reference, maybe. They're just mapping out the market, they're still in the process of that, and then they just jump ahead. They cut their analysis short and just take a trade. They just jump in there, jump in there, put risk on, pull, pull that arm on the slot machine, you know. <laughs> um, other traders will come in, they'll have a look at the market, they'll map out the market, they'll decide they want, uh, you know, I shouldn't laugh, but I mean, we all maybe have done this um, I mean, I'm, I'm personally speaking, I'm more of a fast thinker, quite aggressive uh, trader, uh, aggressive with action and attacking sort of with decision sets and whatnot and actions, uh, you know, but traders find the level, they think, of, wow, this is an amazing level of this trades or the one on the upside trades, I know what I'm going to do. And it comes down to that. The market comes to the level and they don't take the trade. They don't take the trade. I have one session with a trader that I work with. I've been working with uh, for a couple of months. And they'd done really good analysis that morning. They'd stepped away for like two, four, five minutes. The market had come down to their level and then the trade had started working out. And what happened was the market was their trade that they hadn't yet taken because they were out was now on side like 15 ticks or something. And so they decided to chase the market down to enter at market, even though it was now say 15 ticks away from their perfect entry. And what they didn't do was manage where the risk should be on that trade. Originally where it should have been on the trade. And so that trader, jumped in, got stopped out, chased the market again, jumped in, stopped out. And so we actually had a, a chat. Um, I happened to be trading at the same time and we got on a chat and I said, listen, man, it, this market is actually gonna swing back up to your entry level. And when it does, only when it does that, I want you to take the trade again but don't be chasing this market around as it, as it blows lots of different levels out of the water. You had good levels, but you decided that, you know, 
You've done your morning prep, fine, that's one OODA loop here. Then we have another one to do when you come in and you've missed the trade, you've missed your entry, well then you've got to start a new OODA loop, okay? And you should orient or observe and orientate yourself that if you were to get in now with say 10 ticks of risk chasing this trade, the market can very well pull back and blow you out. And you're going to be right, but you're going to lose money. So luckily enough, we had a great session on that trade. The trade did come back. The first attempt, he actually did get blown out in the first attempt, but on the second attempt, uh, he was determined to stay with that trade and he pulled back all of his losses for that whole morning session on simply being persistent with his mindset about how he was thinking. He was now ready to feed new information in in rapid time. So, you know, the most common thing though that I see with traders that you know it's 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 overactiveness and and these traders when when I ask them well what do you think is wrong with your trading they'll say oh man I'm just I'm just overactive I'm just too active I don't know I don't know what is going on I just can't stop being such an active trader right well what happens is they come in they now I'll get a new loop going here for this right okay they come in and they observe orientate they have a decision to act at a certain level and take action at that level and sure enough they they take action right what happens is you know they take the action and they get stopped out and they go oh, i shouldn't even use a green pen for this they take the action they take a trade and maybe they get stopped out right well, they just go back to making a decision of saying, you know what, I'm going to get in again. I think I just, I think I just got blown out on the level there. I think it's now it's going to be supportive, right? So they, they make a decision, you know what, I think I'm, I'm just going to buy in again. Okay. Well, this is dangerous now. They've taken another action. They're probably buying a market that was probably falling against them. They take that action. And they say, you know what, I'm just going to buy some more. I'm going to move my stop out. Instead of, instead of getting that action and the feedback and then going back to just watching this market. Or maybe the levels are good and they just go back to orientation and say, are these levels good? Maybe I need to go back out to the daily bar and see is this level now getting crushed instead of doing that these traders decide to chase this market down uh, they decide to chase the market down and continue to take actions so they're buying 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 then it comes against them so much that it just hurts too much and they've got to puke it okay and then what they do is oh you know what you know what, actually, I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get short this market. I'm going to short this market, right? I, I'm short this market now because it's going down. It kept going down. I'm going to get short. Well, I think we all know this story. We've heard this one before. Let's create a new color for this bad decision of flipping against the market that's coming against you. Well, they take the decision to short the market now because the longs have been crushing them or they've been getting crushed on the longs. Um, so they decide to short the market and they get stopped out because the market is now cooked on the downside and it's ready to firm up in this area. And lo and behold, what happens is the traders blow on probably their daily risk limits, maybe more, and now the trade starts working out in their favor. I mean, it's, re it's, it's really, really, really common, okay? Now, how can we fix this, all right? How can we get better right, at, you know, at, at solving this stuff? How can we avoid this, right? So what we do is we simply, 
you know, a, a very common solution to this is when we get our feedback here at this point, you know, where we're getting stopped out, where we're flipping, you know, all these things, right? Um, when we get our result, we should simply just feed back into observing the market or reorientating ourselves on the market. But instead, we get stuck in this loop, in DA loop, I call it, a DA loop. It's just really, really, really dangerous stuff. The old DA loop. We just get stuck there. We don't want to be calm and observe because we're really amped up. We just want to be in the market. You know, something I talked about in the first sessions were, was, uh, you know, we need to rethink what working means and what working is, all right? You know, this is not a job where the longer you spend with contracts in the market, the more money you make. Now, unless, you, unless you're consistent, unless you have a good handle on your psychology, um, that, that, is, that is the baseline. Sure, if you're a swing trader, obviously, you know, you need, you know, if you need a trade thesis to work out over a number of days, weeks, months, fine. Okay, that's a different situation. But us as intraday traders, scalpers, for example, position traders, for example, um, it's not, that's not the case. Looking back at the first video, you'll see that I'm talking about, we have to think differently about work. It doesn't, just because we're sitting at the computer does not mean we're, we, are get, we are making money every minute that goes by. This is, this is not, you know, an office job. This is not for clocking in, clocking out. If you want a job to clock in and clock out of, you should, you should not watch this video anymore and forget about trading because that is simply not what this job is. So, you know, working is waiting to me, you know, with trading and, and working is not just sitting in front of the casino all the time. So really, that's all I wanted to cover on this was to make people, just to make people aware of OODA loop, what we do naturally as traders, um, what we should aim to do naturally as traders. You know, if you're stuck in a DA loop, right, the best thing for you is to say, hold on a second, this is madness, and click a flatten all button on your on your system and just get flat and then get up from your desk and go for a walk for five minutes minimum five minutes and then when you come back to your charts you'll have a whole different uh, physiology you know you'll you'll feel different you'll 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 have released some tension you'll be able to look at your charts and what was going on in that market with a whole new set of eyes. And you'll be able to become sober, in a sense, uh, from this DA loop that we can get stuck in, okay? All right, moving on here, really, um, what we can do, essentially, as traders in a practical sense. You know, what can we do, apart from all this psychology stuff, Tim? Well, number one for me is really, having clean charts, having clean charts, clean charts, clean mind. Absolutely. You know, every chart that you use on your screens should have a very specific job. Okay. You shouldn't have charts on there that you know, well, I have one chart for the stochastics. I have one chart for the Holy Grail indicator. I have another chart for the, the double fast Holy Grail indicator. I have another one for MACDs. No, no, no. You need to really cut down on all these indicators and simply just have price action bar charts, for example. If you're not trading value, which is something that my team do and that I, I you know, I work a lot with, um, you know, we also use a lot of time bars, really, actually. Um, you know, you really just need to throw out all these other indicators and things. You'll see in the room every day in the Discord that I'm looking at and trading just clean 30-minute bar charts. 
in conjunction with a daily bar chart in pretty much nine different markets. It's the same for Sam, it's the same for, for Will, Pierce. It's the same. You know, it, you don't need all of these indicators. Um, so you shouldn't have an, as well, which is quite common as, as, as tons of news resources, um, you know, on multiple screens like, you know, Bloomberg, Reuters, um, uh, Al Jazeera, you know, CNBC, you've got these four videos going and Sky maybe, and, and, you know, your brain is just getting completely cooked with all this information overload when really you just need the simplicity of your charts, maybe a squawk and a, an analyst like, like the way we have Anthony in, in the room. You know, um, this is all we need as traders. We don't need 10,000 uh, veins of information coming into our, into our brains at all times. It's just too confusing and it's too much. And it's also very easy to get turned around doing so. So simplification, really. Uh, get rid of the non-core data. And also, you know, to have your phone out of sight and on silence, essentially, for all of the trading day. Um, you know, next thing really for me, which is the common pillar for everybody about their trading is stats. You know, I like to call this the mats of me, t -mom, right? What are my stats? I need, I need to get better as a trader. Okay, how, how um, where do I start to get better? Well, I need to know about myself as a trader. So what are my stats? What's my win rate? So you can pull up your charts, your charting package. You can pull up uh, pro real time, uh, you know, trader view, v -u -e .com, com is a great uh, trading statistics package. You can't um, upload uh, spread betting data there, but you can upload futures, DMA, direct market access trades to it. Um, you can upload equities trades, options trades, all this sort of stuff. It's a fantastic program. There's Edgewonk as well. Um, you know, there's a lot of brilliant ways out there to just track your stats. So what's my win rate, okay? What's the win rate? Okay, well, 35%. Let's take it that you have a 35% win rate. Okay, fine. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that you need to be winning one in three trades on average and what, we actually really need to find out here is what is your risk okay so if you have say let's say you've a you know around a 33 percent win rate right well the win rate is is not that important when it comes to um, really you know getting to know yourself as a trader what what is important is you know we have risk versus reward you know one two say three one is to three my risk risk is one unit and my reward is three units okay so out of three trades you lose you lose you win well i only lost one dollar here one dollar here but i made three dollars here so what's my net total here is one okay so we're winning okay we're winning right so you got to think about this and the maths and that if your win rate is like 33 percent, 35 percent, that doesn't mean you're a terrible trader at all it doesn't mean you're a terrible trader i've seen fantastic traders and, and these guys are, are openly out there that have 25 percent win rates you know, but the, the, the important thing is, is that these guys have, they look to make on their trades, they're looking at risk reward rates of something like, you know, one is the five, okay? One is the five, something like quite big, like Paul Tudor Jones, uh, he targets one is the five or one to eight, you know, like one unit of risk to five units of reward 
or one unit of risk to eight units of reward, right? Because that means that they know that they're going to lose 70% of their trades. But the ones that they win on, they need to win big on to make up for all those seven losers, right? So, you know, your improvement will start with knowing your stats and knowing what that means. Now, if anyone has any trouble working out what their win rate um, is indicative of, or what sort of risk reward returns that they should be looking for as a minimum, feel free to get in touch with me. You can email me at t.duggan at amplifytrading.com. That's no problem at all. And um, you know, you can reach me on YouTube by putting a comment down below here. You know, I'd be more than happy to, to help you with that. It's easy peasy. Um, so the other thing is your truth, okay? Your, the truth of your trade, all right? Let's trade your truth. I see this happen a lot where traders have really good trade concepts. They want to get in at a certain level and then the market comes into that level and some other trader might say to them, oh, you're, you're going to buy that level, are you? I don't know. I think I want to short there. And, that, and then the trader is completely bombed uh, psychologically uh, and through their confidence, their confidence is completely shot then in this trade because, you know, they don't have the psychological conviction to their analysis and their OODA loop that they've just done to get from O, O to D. And then they're not able to take A, the action, because they see that, you know, this trader over here, well, he may be or may not be better than me or she may or not be. Uh, but actually and now I don't know what I think about this trade. Well, that's that, you know, you have to trade your truth the way you see the market. Uh, we talk a lot about this in my group. We talk so much about this in that, you know, you got to have psychological conviction in your levels. You know, I, that's why and where that's really where, sorry, I spend most of my time when I'm working with people, with working with traders is, is building up the psychological conviction they have to their trade and their levels. Okay. I want to, I want to get those traders to a point where they have so much read on the market and their analysis as they're going through their OODA or their OOD that when the trades come up at these levels, they're only looking for very minute details um, to sway them to one way or the other to actually, um, you know, get in that trade. They're, 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 they're not compromised. They're not sitting there at a deficit of knowledge or confidence in their job and their ability to do their job. They know that they can trade and they know that they want to get involved in this level. They're not going to have someone on CNBC or on the squawk saying, oh, we're just seeing, you know, this happened actually on uh, Thursday or Thursday or Friday where the squawk came on and he said, uh, we're seeing a huge amount of sellers coming on, on the book uh, for the S&P 500 at uh, X price, uh, 33.25, for example. I can't remember the exact price. And so if you are sitting there and you're looking to be long the market, and you're saying, and you're seeing that there's a huge amount of selling coming in, and it's in in this level. You're you're going to be sitting there thinking, "Oh shit, I don't, I don't know if I want to. I don't, I don't know if I want to get involved in the longs here now." If uh, the squawk is saying there's a whole lot of selling here, there's a whole lot of selling all the time. You've got to have conviction in order to do this job, in your ability to do this job. Okay, so be good to yourself. Fourth thing. Uh, is to have realistic expectations, okay? So a lot of traders think in the early days, they think, wow, I can come in here, I can make like one, two, five, six, eight grand a day, just smashing it on the NASDAQ. This is so easy. I've seen, you know, X trader and Y trader just being able to kill it. And they're driving Lamborghinis on Instagram and da, 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 da. You know this this is not this is not what trading is like this is not what trading is like 
um, you know, traders who are on maybe micros, trying their hand at trading, learning, developing their skills. Um, I think it would really pay dividends, you know, to say, hey, what is my figure per day that says to me, that, that tells me that I'm winning, that I'm doing good? What is that figure? Hands up who has that figure out there, you know. The point is, is that, you know, we deny ourselves the win by not defining what our target amount is per day, per week, per month. We don't do it. Who, who, who has written down on their desk what the, those figures are? If I reach X amount of dollars today, I'm going to stop. If I, I'm sure they have all, all sorts of downside figures, baked, you know, uh, baked into their head or written down on spreadsheets and da, 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 breakers in their, in their software system, whatever. But when do they make the same commitment to the upside? Well, the answer is they rarely do. R traders do not s set themselves up to say, I've won today, I'm stopping trading. It's just, no, continuous, continuous trading, trading, putting on risk, putting on risk, putting on risk until the wheels start to come off the bus so much that then they stop. Well, how about you set some realistic expectations and develop consistency that way? You know, if you're trading micros and you're trading maybe, I don't know, uh, like a thousand dollars in a micros account, like one trader was that I was talking to recently. He said, oh, it should be super easy for me to pull down like five or 600 quid a day trading micros. And I was like, well, yeah, but you do realize that's the equivalent of like five or $6,000 a day um, if you were to be trading full size clips. And he's like, yeah. And I said, you know, if you're starting out and you're not, if you're not consistent, that's just unrealistic. And you're holding your, your, your target at such a high level that you're really kind of designing for yourself to, to find it very hard to win. You're designing a very, very difficult game for yourself here. How about, how about you design a game that's really easy? Like, you know, I talked in the first video that making money is relatively easy, but keeping hold of it and compounding it is what's relatively hard, right? And a few of you have agreed with me on that and talked to me uh, since about that and agreed with that, right? So how about we start to fix this game in our favor? And we say, you know what? This is my dollar amount today. I'm trading micros. I have a small account. This is the amount of my, I want to make. I want to make $100 today. And I want to make $100 every day this, this, this week or this month. And then I can build that consistency. I can compound that money day on day, week on week. Okay. And this is how we start to grow as a trader. The amount of confidence that we can derive and grow from just simply having five, six, 10, 15 consecutive green days in a row. Yeah, maybe you don't have to hit your target. Maybe some days you will far, super, far, far overshoot your target. Okay, but there'll be other days where you're finding it hard to hit your target and you just feel like, okay, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk today, but I didn't lose any money. I'm green on the screen. I'll fight again tomorrow. You know, but design the game so you can win and, and build on those wins. So that's really all I have for you guys. You know, I think it's, it's going to be... Uh, maybe one or two more videos. The next session I'm going to do is going to be with uh, Krija, who is a sports psychologist and she specializes in elite performance psychology for sports, uh, sports professionals. So I've actually worked with Krija uh, 
on a number of occasions. She's worked with quite a few traders, a lot of rugby players in Ireland and Australia. Um, she is really fantastic at bringing a practicality uh, towards uh, tuning into higher performance thinking and how we can set ourselves in a position to think better and to, to gain that performance. Uh, so thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for letting me take your time this evening. This is video two done. If you haven't seen video one, go back, have a look. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do click the link below and subscribe to the Amplify YouTube. We've got some really fantastic content coming out daily. We're also in uh, the Discord room daily, uh, analyzing these markets, checking what's happening in real time and seeing what's happening overnight and talking about what's happening coming up through the week. You know, we have fantastic stuff going on in Discord. Um, it's a great room. So I look forward to seeing you there. And until the next time, bye-bye. Thanks for your time.